Welcome to this presentation on solving systems of equations by substitution. What we're working with is we're working with a system of linear equations. A linear equation, that's an equation with, that's a straight line, right? So these are straight line, straight lines. And basically, if you remember from when we did this with graphing, and we had two lines, right? We wanted to know this point, right? We wanted to know where they meet, this point. There's three options here. They can intersect. They can be parallel. They can be the same line, right? That's what should have been the same line. And we're going to do what we were doing you know, prior, you know, with graphically, but we're just going to do it with algebra this time because graphs aren't always going to work out for us. So let's look at some examples. So substitution, what do we mean? Well, let's look at this easy example here. Two equations. Negative 8x plus 3y is equal to negative 18. We, and we also know y is equal to negative 6. These lines are going to intersect somewhere. And since we're going to do substitution, and this is already y is equal, we're just going to take this first equation and rewrite it. And instead of, you know, instead of this y, everywhere there's a y, I'm going to put a negative 6. And then I'm going to solve this for x. So I've got negative 8x minus 18 is equal to 18. I'm going to add 18 to both sides. So I've got negative 8x is equal to 0. Divide both sides by negative 8 x is equal to 0. Then you take your final answer and you're going to write it as an ordered pair. So what we know is these lines intersect at this point, 0, negative 6. Sometimes it's going to be given to you in this form. You've got an equation instead of a constant. Don't freak out if you have an equation. Most people don't have any trouble with this one. You know, Easy, right? Number one's easy. But for some reason, you know, we get this 2x minus 5, and we're like, oh my goodness, I got an equation, what am I supposed to do with it? Well, you just plug it in. You got 8x minus y is equal to 5, which is the same thing as 8x minus a negative 1 times y is equal to 5. There's a reason I, I put that negative 1 there, and that's because when we substitute, where we see a y, we're going to write this equation. 2x minus 5 is equal to 5. You've got this negative 1, and we're going to want to distribute it. So you got 2x minus 2x plus 5 is equal to 5. And that's the algebra that's going on behind it. Some people would have just known to take the opposite signs here, but I always like to show what's happening algebraically. Now we're just going to solve for x. So combine our like terms, 8x minus 2x, that's 6x, plus 5 is equal to 5. So we're going to start isolating the variable. So I'm, so I'm subtracting 5 from both sides. It gives me 6x is equal to 0. Divide both sides by 6. x is equal to 0. So I know these lines intersect at 0, negative 5. Don't read anything here. And what I mean is, both, notice both of these have an x is equal to 0. It just worked out for these first two problems that that happened. Don't read anything into it. It's just a coincidence. Look at something slightly more difficult. Let's look at here. Notice neither equation is solved for a variable, right? Actually, same thing with this one, this one. So, what do you do if, if you have two linear equations, you're trying to solve them using substitution, but neither one are solved for a variable? Well, what you do is you pick an equation, and you solve it for a variable. Does it matter which equation? No. Pick 
the easy equation to work with. And that's kind of subjective. You know, you, you, you look at it, you know what looks easiest to you, and start working with that one. So this one, I'm going to pick this one, and I'm going to solve for x. So I've got x minus 8y is equal to negative 19. I'm going to add 8y to both sides. So now I have x is equal to 8y minus 19. I want to plug or substitute into the other equation, which in this case is the bottom equation. So I've already worked with this equation. I hadn't worked with this one, so I'm going to put this into the equation I hadn't worked with. So now we've got 4, time, 4, right? Then open my parentheses, 8y minus 19. Minus 6y is equal to 2. I'm going to distribute my 4. So I got 4 times 8, which is 32. I got 4 times 19. That's 4 times 19. 76, right? And that's a negative 76 minus 76. I got my, I got my y there. 32y minus 76. My 6y is equal to 2. Combine like terms. So 32 minus 6. That's, so I've got 26y. Minus 76 is equal to 2. Adding 76 to both sides. So now I've got 26y is equal to 78. 78 divided by 26, that looks like that's going to be 3, right? Because 3 times 26 is 78. So y is equal to 3. Okay, now I'll plug this into either equation. And actually what I want to plug it into is this right here. The reason I'm plugging it in into 8y minus 9 is because it's already soft x. It'll just save me some steps, but if you, you could put it you put it here if you want, you can put it here if you want, and you may want to work it by putting it in into both of those equations just to see that it doesn't matter, you always get the same answer. So you got 8 times y, which is 3, minus 19, and we know that's x, right? So you got 24 minus 19 is equal to x. 24 minus 19 is 5, so we know x is equal to 5 y is equal to 3. To get full credit, you do 5, 3 as an ordered pair. That's perfect. If you're in my class, this will get you 100%. This will get you an 89%. A answer, B plus answer. Good luck.